Yes. So, gosh, it's a really lovely day. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> so we've just stepped outside with, with our coffee in the coffee break. And I was wondering, um, James, if you could tell us about how long you've been coming to Jackdaws. Well, I've been coming down here, I think, first of all, to the festival. So that was over 30 years ago. And then on and off for classes uh, during the, 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 the last 30 years. So uh, very pleased to come down to the festival. First of all, there's a young pianist and meet Maureen Lahan Wishart, uh, who is really Jack Dawes, <laughs> the, the force behind it, and uh, played up the hill. And uh, it was uh, a, a, a funny day for me because I arrived uh, very nervous for the event. And I think I'd had an accident with my food in the service station on the way down. So I managed to <laughs> arrive covered in tomato sauce. <laughs> And uh, done the usual thing, I've tried to wash it off, which of course makes it four times worse. <laughs> well, I think we can see that you're very smartly attired with no oh, tomato sauce today. Yeah, yeah. I've wiped case. everything off before I came. So 30 years is, is a very long mm. time. And what is it about Jack Tools that makes you keep coming back? Well, I believe in what Ma Maureen believed in, in that, that she really wanted, when she set up the, the sort of art centre aspect, she wanted a high quality of um, intense weekends for... Uh, for the amateur pianist uh, and for, for, for teachers who wanted to brush up their work and uh, people who just wanted to meet other musicians and play to them. She thought that um, they deserved uh, people who had, um, you know, like her, had a lot of experience uh, from a life in music. And uh, I loved the feeling of people arriving, often very worried, often quite lost when they get here, <laughs> <laughs> from their work week or from all over the uh, uh, from, uh, all over the country, and then just gradually transforming. The, the countryside transforms them. The, the lovely food, uh, the fresh air, and uh, the wonderful facilities we have here. And on the Sunday afternoon, certainly in the old days, on Saturday afternoon, she made everybody go for a walk, um, and uh, we don't do that at the, at the moment. But uh, on the Sunday afternoon, often the villagers would arrive with dogs and sit quietly while the uh, people who had experienced their just really short time here, a weekend, they were playing well, they were relaxed and happy, and they'd been able to spend time on the thing that they loved, you know, which they may not be able to do at home. But I found, I found the transformation, it was the Sunday afternoon moment where they all played. They played in such a different level of understanding, and that always felt rather, rather magical in terms of what Maureen had done for us. I would give us a slightly pompous speech at the end of the event and, and I remember while she sat there I said oh well, you know, thank you for the, this room has got so many wonderful vibrations and uh, uh, you know, thank you Maureen for organising this for us and giving us this opportunity. Now we have to go back for real life and she said no no this is real life <laughs> which I thought oh yes. <laughs> Just before we go back in, because I can hear your, your people are warming up, um, could you tell us just a bit about your professional career uh, away from Jack Dawes, perhaps? Yeah, well, I, you know, I studied music and I, studied, I was fortunate enough to study academically as well as with fantastic, wonderful teachers um, who reached back, I think, uh, my teacher sort of was born at the beginning of the 20th century, so it was interesting to hear her talk about... Um, um, you know, figures such as her, she met Ratmaninoff, for instance, several times, and she knew the Sitwells. And, um, uh, so that that was a connection at the beginning of my life, and then uh, the the life of a young young artist, young parent, and uh, Jamie Music. We've uh, been fortunate enough to uh, 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 also, apart from working by myself as a soloist, I've worked with really wonderful musicians, uh, which is such a nice thing to travel with them and learn from each other and be, in, uh, you know, try and uh, get the energy from each other, but also just to have people that we can share our experiences as musicians, which sometimes seems like a rather isolated world. Sometimes the forces of politics uh, seem, to be <laughs> uh, seem to be against us. <laughs> and, uh, you know, with recent news of uh, what appears to be quite savage cuts, uh, you know, throughout the last 20 years or so, I think all of us musicians have felt, um, whoa, what are we here for? And it's places like Jack Dawes that remind us, I think, you know, we, we can do our concerts and we can turn up and meet the promoter and go away. But funny enough, going to Jack Dawes, we see, we see music in the raw uh, and, and very honest, beautiful music making without agenda. People who perhaps have, you know, got other jobs come here. So that, that aspect has always fascinated. It's been fascinated me um, increasingly over the last couple of decades. 
um, and I, obviously I teach children and I teach um, uh, sort of conservatory level uh, people who are going into the profession but I think the most satisfying thing is the people who have come back to their instruments from childhood um, and they, or people who've gone into retirement or, or the very busy music teacher who needs a refresher just needs to learn hear, hear new vocabulary new ideas be reminded of old ones and also have the uh, challenge of playing in front of, uh, of other people for me that's that's put my professional work or my my, uh, my solo performances in it's given it another dimension uh, the, the, the sort of symbiosis of give and take between the people that are on this course and I can hear getting ready for the <laughs> next class now <laughs>